no doer means just observe or witness see doer or no doer the observing and witnessing is always happening you cannot say no i won't observe now i won't witness now it it is not possible to say that so and the concept of no doer is simply not entertaining the concept of doership no doership does not mean doing something so i hope you got it got the answer just do not entertain the idea of doership then the witnessing is happening anyway you see and if you say no i don't want to be a doer i want to be witness well that is pushing too much it is unnatural because the observing and witnessing is happening anyway don't try to do not doing <laughs> it it does not work like this now you can see a little bit a funny thing here that the concept of doership is so deep in the mind that people want to do the non doer thing is it possible no and there is a interesting story again a very small story i heard somewhere from some foreigner who is it at south india and uh, not south india he visited sri lanka he was very interested in buddhism there and uh, he was very excited oh i'm doing the greatest thing in the world now and um, i'll become a monk so he went to the uh, whatever place there is and uh, met the lama or whatever they are called the head he he expressed his wish i to become i want to become monk and i'll want to learn meditation and all so he told the procedures and all these things that you will and he agreed you know without asking without you were listening to the full thing and told them just teach me the meditation the fellow there and told him sit down okay now breathe and he said yes okay now what now nothing and that person he was a western person and, and the idea of non doing is totally alien to them so meditation is something which you do in the west isn't it <laughs> i get this question how to do the meditation and then i don't know where to start so he is doing i'm breathing yes now what so he said no nothing just do this and um, the newcomer was totally confused i came from thousands of miles to do nothing and um, the lama said yes exactly <laughs> so this is the story you know what it means you cannot do nothing don't try to do nothing it's not possible and this moment is all there is it is fleeting it is chaotic it is going away you cannot grasp it and that is the only beauty that it has make it permanent and well it becomes ugly it becomes a burden so on and you can now apply this knowledge in everyday life and check what happens see what happens when you stop trying to oppose the flow of the things oh this broke down that broke down he said this and that said well these things are the most beautiful things that are happening no i don't want these to happen i want others to happen and immediately realize that this is the projection of the mind when the other things happen they will be beautiful they will be as beautiful as perfect as it is actually i habitually use the word beautiful because sundaram is a direct translation of sundaram satyam shivam sundaram so the english proper english word is perfection because when i say beautiful you imagine something beautiful <laughs> the pile of garbage is also perfection you see so it is perfect as it is because it cannot be anything else it cannot be permanent it cannot be that which the mind is projecting and so you you can say okay okay i'll stop projection and no the projection is also perfect just realize that your mind has projected something beautiful this hope this wish this desire is also perfect now now suddenly you will find there is a change in the mind the background of the mind will become peaceful it will also become perfect yes there is a desire yes okay fine let it be there no i need to run okay if i do then yes that's what is perfect 
Yeah, there will be peace. There will be background of peace and satisfaction. And that's what we call equanimity. Equanimity is not the absence of mental activities. You can achieve that kind of equanimity if you want. We sit down in one place and then just observe the mind flowing. Do nothing. <laughs> and it will settle down. And equanimity. It will come out again. This mind. So the mind is equanimous or not equanimous. The being is always both. So being is beyond these things. The true nature, you cannot apply these words to the true, true nature. It is infinitely peaceful and so infinitely troubled is both. So you can do that by sitting, but that's not the equanimity. That's kind of net practice. You're practicing, you're training the mind. And the real one is when there is everything is going on. This fish market of the mind is on and that is equanimity. And that happens when you realize that everything is fleeting. This is the noise of the river. It is flowing, it is chaotic. And that brings the real equanimity. And this is the whole teaching. At least I interpret it like this. So there is no way to achieve equanimity. This cannot be done. And the only way is the negative way of clearing out the projections of the mind. Not taking them seriously, too seriously. This, these are the words of some great teacher that I'm forgetting name. But probably he, everybody uses these words now. Don't take the mind too seriously. You are taking the life too seriously. And there is another very good um, quote that uh, a man suffers because he is taking that seriously which the gods have made for fun. You must have heard this. Very popular on Twitter. What did the gods made for fun? Well, there is fun only when things are changing, isn't it? So impermanence. We don't want things to be impermanent and that's why we suffer. The impermanence is perfection, actually. If somebody wants want me to create something, I'll create it in an impermanent way. It must be your own experience that when you watch a movie, well, the movie is... Kind of, there is a speed there in the movie. If nothing happens in the movie, you don't want to watch it. <laughs> there is a flow in the movie. That's why you are engaged there, you know, nail-biting movies. Now take a poster of that movie and hang it on your wall. One day, two day, well, it looks nice, you see. It looks cool. After that, you'll stop looking at the poster. I'll tell you one secret. In my house, there is not even one picture. Somebody came and commented actually on this. Your house is very minimalistic. And I said, is that an insult? He said, no, no, no. But there's nothing to look at. And I actually did not answer, but it is my experience. As soon as I put something there, it becomes extremely boring after two days. Extremely boring. Oh, no, I don't want to look at this thing. So there is nothing. The walls are empty. So I, I want you to do this experiment, you see. Live a mi minimalistic kind of design. Only that which is very, very much needed. Throw away everything that is for the show. So it is. it was my experience. And you should experiment a little bit. Have you seen those um, uh, compartments in Japan? Made up of bamboo and paper. What is there in it? Is there a shivling? Is there a big statue of Kali? Is there nothing actually? Sometimes just leaves of bamboo or something is painted. Very, very minimalistic circle. <laughs> what do you call it? And so, something like that. So, why is that? Then there are different reasons. But the um, good reason, according to me, is that the blank, the emptiness is more beautiful than something which limits it. When you hang a painting on your wall, you have limited the possibility to that painting, isn't it? You have made it permanent. So let's bring our minds into the higher layers of intellect and even higher awareness because in the daily routine, the mind functions in the lower layers. So there is a 
very good method to bring it to the higher layers it is by thinking about spiritual matters it is by asking a question contemplating remembering so i use these methods a lot some people may want to use a mantra or can uh, a statue or something that puts that person the ritual puts the mind on the higher layers instantly so satsang is uh, a time when uh, we push the mind to intellect and beyond and uh, probably the whole day will be spent like this if you are in a 2 hour or 3 hour satsang so probably we cannot do it every day which you will need to do it according to your own ritual set up your own ritual satsang is assisted ritual so on the path of knowledge because we do not meditate nothing we expect the seeker to be always on the higher side to be to be always beyond intellect so there are nothing and no rituals mentioned on the path of knowledge if you find that you cannot achieve that state of mind which is conducive for the spiritual growth then you can invent your own ritual there is no harm at least for the beginners you can take uh, help of uh, uh, yogic postures breathing pranayam meditation dhyan all these techniques are for all seekers not only for seekers of that particular tradition everybody can use it if you know how to use it to know how to use it you must get some training from it trainer a guru or if you can do something very very light sit down and watch the breathing pattern that is enough sometimes to stop the mind from abiding in the lower layers the chatter of the mind will stop there it mind won't stop and let's not do that mistake mind cannot be stopped its specific activities can be stopped many people <laughs> try to stop their mind by standing on one feet and <laughs> torturing the body and that's a stupidity because on the path of knowledge you are now introduced to the mind you should know that stopping of the mind is impossible it will never stop what happens is the activity shifts from one layer to another so if the lower layers they stop people assume oh my my mind has stopped no the activity is going on in the causal body and other other bodies cannot stop the perception will not will not stop all there is is the mind it cannot stop so and let us not make this mistake of stopping the mind you can only shift the activity from the lower layers to the higher layers so i i hope just by talking like this your mind has already shifted to the higher layers you can check the usual mess of the mind the garbage in the mind is gone for most of you it's very effective method all you need to put all you need to do put the mind into a job give it a task which involves higher layers and it like a very good servant it will do that and by you i mean the intellect the intellect should be in command the command center should be in command not the body or the lower centers they need to be active only when needed when not needed well should rest or do something which the body and mind likes like watering the plant cleaning the house and nobody likes it i think but <laughs> do listen to the music something like this this is totally different world we are living in so probably your servants to clean the house and wash your clothes and all but uh, somebody who lives alone like in a jungle these options are not available so what i do is i do my daily work while trying to be aware i don't even push the mind to the higher layers let it do whatever it's doing and become aware of that the awareness takes care of everything you see when you are situated at, at the agya everything else behaves properly <laughs> this must be your direct experience isn't it so this was a tip hopefully that will be useful 
uh, whatever you are doing become aware of that and then uh, you will be always for most of the time will be on the higher layers it does not mean that uh, the activity at the lower layers totally stops no it can continue the body can keep doing whatever it is doing mind can keep thinking the ego even the ego can function the ident- identity can function as long as it functions under the command center in the intellect and higher awareness it's okay what is wrong in that what is happening is for an ordinary person the higher layers are not so active and the lower layers are like in behaving in a rogue fashion they are behaving in like a unmanaged office where the <laughs> you must have seen those offices when the boss is not there everything is a mess in that office nobody works so i had the fortune of working in such an office so every time i went out people also went out they did their own jobs they did their own thing as as long as i am there everything worked so it was very frustrating it was very frustrating nobody will come to the office until i am there they come exactly one or two minutes behind me because no need no need to work if nobody is asking them to work so and the lower layers are like this and they are they lack motivation they are programmed to do whatever is their default behavior so it needs to be always under the control not the obsessive control you cannot use a hunter a whip stick to control them it's not healthy way it it needs to be done only for a severely defective mind for only for an afflicted mind mental disorders then you need to take the, those um, heavy uh, steps heavy uh, what do you call corrective measures for an ordinary mind simple motivation is needed that's all be present and everything will work don't leave the office <laughs> it is okay if if they are working it's okay if they stop working then you need to worry isn't it the identity stops working then it becomes a big mess and uh, happens to many people if the lower layers the anger and fear they stop working lust stops working it becomes a total disaster for that human being the higher layers that they are not concerned with such functions if they are working it's okay not working it's okay but body and the ego they need to be maintained they need to be healthy so many people have this this misconception i need to get rid of body i need to get rid of ego and that comes because of the half knowledge they heard it somewhere they they heard a 10 minutes video on youtube oh, look at your ego it's dreadful thing get rid of it and then you will become spiritual that the end of the video It, it, the videos don't tell you everything you see so even the books won't tell you this detail because it's a matter of practice it's a matter of implementation of the teachings there are there are teachings and then there is implementation of the teaching now you need to be practical uh, it happened to me that i recognized this very very late this needs to be recognized first that the body and mind and ego and all these the society and the world is here for some reason yes it's all false no doubt about it it's all non existent still there is a false reason behind it what is that reason we need to find out surely it is not to destroy whatever has been created isn't it and that is that will if you assume like this it will be it will be an, disaster because you heard somewhere mukti 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 and then you want mukti and then and you and they will tell you it is cessation of the mind no more birth and instantly the destructive pictures come in your mind destructive ideas come in your mind okay it's all maya so let it go to hell and i am going somewhere else where will you go <laughs> is there a place to go in the totality when you are the totality is there a place to go anywhere 
This is all there is. Cannot go anywhere. And therefore, acceptance. Therefore, we accept this life, this body, this mind, this ego. And the, the kaushalya is to live with the experience instead of rejecting the experience. This is the art. It's the art of living.